up to the podium. That would be appreciated. So once again, the book launch today is for Rise in the Global Economy, Strategic Research and Policy Issues for Food Security. To start the presentations is going to be the Chair of the Editorial Board of the book, Dr. Sushil Pandil, Handy, who is a Senior Economist at ERIM. Dr. Pandy. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Welcome to this book launch ceremony. Uh, we have the book cover page on display there. Um, Rise in the global economy. Um, whenever there is a book being prepared, the natural question that comes to mind is that why one more book? Why, why another book on rice economy? There have been several books in the past, going as far back as 1941. Somebody wrote, uh, two people wrote about the rice economy of monsoon Asia, uh, highlighting some of the issues at the time. And uh, in 1985, Randy Barker and Bob Hurd wrote the book, The Asian Rice Economy, capturing many of the highlights of the Green Revolution up to that time. And uh, I would like to remind you that 1985 it also, was also the year of 25 years of Erie's founding, Silver Jubilee. And here, today we are here under the 50th year. Subsequently, another book that Prabhu mentioned in his, in his uh, opening address also, the Asian Rice Bowls, returning crisis. And that brought many of the issues up to date, up to the 96 stage. And we know very well that 96, 97, and 13, 14 years behind us, there have been many changes. And we have seen those trends in the global economy, global rice production, um, all those uh, issues that we saw in the context of the food crisis of 2008, the price spike, and so on. So the world now is quite different from what it was in the 1990s. Many of those trend trends are still there, but there are many new issues that have come, and hence we felt that it is quite appropriate on this occasion of the 50th anniversary of Erie's founding that we prepare a book, not to tell how fantastic Erie has been, what a fantastic job Erie has done, that you all know already. What we wanted to do is to look ahead and to say that, okay, given all these trends that we know of, the changes that are taking place in the global economy, and how agriculture and other sectors are getting increasingly linked, integrated, and the issues that we have of the food insecurity, price problems, and so on. What are the things? What kind of the rice system will evolve in the future? Or what kind of rice system will be needed for us to assure food security for the poor? So it's a kind of a uh, asking various strategic questions. And some of those that I have listed there that how would the role of rice change in the context of economic growth and uh, how will rice be produced in the future? Small farms, large farms, how level scarcity will affect rice production? And uh, quite importantly, can the poor depend on the rice trade for a stable food security? We saw some big problems in 2008 and what can be done to address those problems? What's the role of Africa and how climate change will affect the future of rice production. So, so really, this book is about developing a new vision for the future of rice farming, 
and the purpose being to strategically position investment in rice research, technology delivery, and design of policy reform. So really help us to think about these key issues and looking ahead, not doing a retrospective analysis. Of course, there will be some basis for moving ahead, but uh, our focus of this book is really looking ahead, forward looking. And uh, this book highlights five major challenges. These include meeting the global food security needs. We know that the food security needs of the poor are still somewhat uh, unmet. There are a lot of risks. Food security is still tenuous as shown by the 2008 food crisis. And uh, so, in the context of the changes like the diversification of diets and uh, the, the role of rice changing in consumption basket, what are those things that we need to do to ensure the global food security? A very important one is the second point, which is the how do you successfully manage structural change? We all know that in the course of economic development, other sectors of economic growth, the side of agriculture in the relative sense will shrink over time. People will start seeking employment in the non-farm sector. And in those contexts, how do you successfully manage the structural change so that the balance of the income distribution between the rural and the urban population is managed better. Uh, and, uh, and how do you balance the needs of the consumers and the producers? And how do you also facilitate the exit of many of the farms, farmers from, from rice production or from agriculture? So these are the broader issues that impinge, that will affect not only the way the rice will be produced, but also the way the, we will be able to address the problem of the deep, deep uh, poverty. Because that is the key of the problem. In terms of addressing the poverty that is so persistent. The third one, enhancing efficiency in input use and value chains. All related to the aspects where we can, we need to be able to save on the input that are becoming more and more scarce, land, labor, water, and so on. And also opportunities on the value chains. Closely related to that is the reducing the environmental footprints. Of course, by improving the input efficiency, that will have a big impact on reducing the environmental footprints of rice production. There are also other direct effects from rice production that could be, that could be environmentally positive. Uh, like the uh, technology that will help reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and so on. And finally, addressing lagging regions. Many of the rent-fed areas, upland areas, areas that are poorly connected with the markets, the poverty is very deep, then how do we address problems in those regions? So this book, various chapters in this book, try to tackle some of these issues and and then have come up with some ideas on the technological opportunities, technological intervention, and the policy and the institutional changes that are needed to be able to address these five major challenges. <coughs> I'll just quickly take you through the process of how this book idea came through. I had a brief chat with Prabhu in 2008 in Manila in the context of the Asian uh, Agricultural Economics Association meeting, and I bounced this idea of him that how about we, that ED would uh, prepare a book, a forward looking book on the occasion of this 50th anniversary, and he was very pleased. He said that yes, uh, come up with a proposal and well, I will take a look. And that's what we started in 2008, August. And after that, then we constituted an editorial board to manage the whole process, commission the chapters. Lead authors, co-authors were uh, uh, contracted, identified and contracted. We had a workshop in Beijing in 2009, and all the papers, chapters were peer reviewed. <coughs> and 
the end-to-end board that manages the process, which uh, uh, the list there with, uh, with me as the chair of the board, uh, and Derek Bayani, former World Bank, and currently the, uh, a, a member of the SPIA, David Dollar, Akim Doberman from UE, PS, Sam Mohanty, Scott Mondale, and Bill Hardy. This is the group that manages the whole process. And here is a long list of authors. I counted just when the, when the book got printed, 59. Each column has 20, the middle has 19. So it's 59 people. They have contributed. Very well known, well established experts in their own fields. And uh, others reviewed each of the chapters, and board members also reviewed the chapters. And uh, there are four sections in the book, and uh, each of these sections address a set of key issues with the rise in the global food economy that deals with the broader issues on the consumption, demand, uh, structure of transformation and rise and so on. I do not want to go through the whole list, just to give you a quick glimpse. And how rice production and post harvest operation might be done in the future, and the input efficiency, how that could be improved. And we looked at each of the components from land, sea, fertilizer, to the managing irrigation pest, and to the post harvest. And we gave it quite a bit of emphasis on the rice market structure, because we know in 2008, the problems we saw were related to market structures. So they both the domestic market and the international market component, trade component. And finally, a wrap-up thing on the issues related to the technologies, what can we do? So this book basically presents a very rich set of ideas to address some of the challenges that I have listed before. Um, I will not go through the list here right now, but let me just try to uh, complete my presentation by expressing acknowledgments, uh, <laughs> expressing our appreciation to the Gates Foundation for the funding support. Many of those authors and co-authors, reviewers, contribute a tremendous amount of time to this chapter, and the ED support staff help out. We have a strong support from the ED board as well as from the ED management. So that's the process that we went through. Uh, as I said, it's a very rich in content, 18, 18 chapters. Um, I would very much encourage you to get hold of a copy, read it carefully, and I'm pretty sure that you'll find the chapters there very, very uh, insightful for researchers, for policy makers, uh, for others who are interested in the rice sector. Thank you very much. <laughs>